the budget for 2024-25 presented today is a contractionary budget. What the Indian economy and the people require, on the contrary, is an expansionary budget. We have the high, one of the highest rates of unemployment, highest rates of food inflation. There's growing levels of restlessness and poverty. And unless the economy expands, none of these issues can be addressed. At the same time, unless the economy expands, the domestic demand will not grow. And till domestic demand does not grow, employment opportunities cannot be generated. And new investments will not come because what is produced by these new investments cannot be purchased as there is no market inside the country. In this situation, this contractionary budget, which actually reduces government expenditure, the revenues last year were projected to have increased by 14.5%, while the expenditure is, grew, is projected to grow by only 5.94%. This huge gap between your earnings and your expenditures is to meet the fiscal deficit, which is growing in order to appease the international finance capital and appease foreign in, uh, institutional invest investors. Instead of using these revenues for the welfare of the people and expanding the demand in our economy, the government has tended towards a contractionary budget, which will only compound our problem. The nominal growth rate that has been projected in the budget is 10.5%. This is deflated by what is called the core inflation of 3%. Now, this core inflation of 3% excludes the very high food and fuel inflation. The food inflation for the same month of this 3% core inflation is 9.4%. If that were to be added, the real growth rate would be much lower than what is being projected today. So there's data fudging also involved in this. And at the same time, we find instead of addressing the problems of employment and our youth, there has been an allocation for the Manrega program, which is of which more than half has already been spent in the first four months. And what is left for the next four months, the next eight months, is only the other half. This is grossly inadequate. There is no proposal for st uh, starting any urban employment guarantee scheme. And in this sort of a situation, that the new scheme that they were introduced in the name of promoting employment, which they have called em employment-linked initiative, is actually a scheme where a worker who is employed will get 5,000 rupees in three monthly installments over, over the year, while the employer benefits 72,000 rupees for each new employee hired. So the so-called incentive can easily be converted into those who are now employed being re-employed and the employer being subsidized to such a high level. There is nothing but transfer of state funds to the corporates and this is the continuation of the policy of concessions to the corporates and avenues for enhancing and maximizing profit, profits. And this is happening at the time when India has got the highest levels of inequality. And with this high levels of inequality, and with the humongous amounts of profits made by the big, big corporates in our country, this was a time when a wealth tax would have been introduced, a super rich tax would have been introduced, an inheritance tax could have been introduced, and this would have resulted in revenues that could have been put to use for expanding public investments, for creating jobs and building our much needed infrastructure. This opportunity was not utilized because this government's 
priority is to actually appeal to the big corporates in our country. And this is the corporate communal nexus that is at work. The net result of this entire thing is this budget fails to address either inflation, unemployment, inequalities, and at the same time, the slowing down of private investments in our country because the market is depressed, there is no demand in the economy, as the purchasing power in the hands of the people is declining. None of the crucial issues concerning both the economy and the people's livelihood are addressed. This is a matter of grave concern. So the CPIM is calling upon all its units to organize protests against the failure of the government to, to address the basic issues confronting the economy and the people.